Drake, quarterback, we know have no has no problem putting the ball in the air. Third and six ball on the 13 yard line. This one is going to be a delayed handoff up the middle to Crittenden one, once again. And Crittenden will be brought down. And we said this was probably four down territory the whole way. We'll see some change of personnel coming in. We'll see if they'll go ahead and try to kick this field goal, take the points, and take the lead. Or will they keep their offense out? And this one is going to be up and through the up. No good that time, what it looks like. And that one is going to be no good as they tried to go for the field goal that time and was not successful. So it looks like the cadets catch a break as they give up uh, the yardage all the way down the field. Stiffen up on third down as they got into the red zone and they're able to come up with the turnover on downs that they needed right there. So good job by the cadet defense to come up with the stop that they needed. First down for them as they come back with 351 left to go. Chance to get into the end zone. Have not really been stopped outside of the fumble by Nobles earlier in this quarter. First and 10, ball on the 20-yard line. Plenty of time for the cadets to try to march down the field. And this one will be a handoff to Sibley. And Sibley will be brought down after a short yardage. And we see multiple flags. So this one is going to be a hold that goes against the cadets. And we're going to see a person to foul for a horse collar against the yeoman. So those penalties will offset each other, and they will replay first down. So the holding and the horse collar make the plays offset each other. So they'll replay first down here, 346 left to go in the half. Still plenty of time for the cadets if they want to try to move down the field. First down to 10. This one is going to be a keeper for Vincent. Vincent's got some green grass in front of him. Vincent able to get out, and he'll be brought down. I know he has a lot of speed for this cadet offense. Gets this one all the way up to the 48-yard line. Big run that time from the sophomore. First down and 10, looks like he came up hobbled just a little bit. He'll stay in the game. First and 10, ball on the 48-yard line. This one is going to be a handoff to Sibley. Sibley staying patient, looking for his hole. Gets to the outside, and he'll be out of bounds after he picks up enough for the first down yardage. But see a penalty marker in the backfield, so this one could be coming back for holding. And it will be holding against Conley, so that will back them up and gate the run that time. So back them up just a little bit. It's going to be a first down and 20 now. So the First down to 20, ball on the 38. As cadets are backed up after that holding penalty. This one, a drop back pass for Vincent. Vincent tries to get the screen to the outside, and it's caught. And he stays on his feet, now still moving down the field. The ball comes out once again, and it looks like another fumble. And this one could be recovered by the Yeoman. And I think they will say Cameron Ball as they fight for it between the two players that time and the cadets will lose possession after a good screen play. Nobles loses the ball once again that time. Looks like it was popped out by the hit. And a good catch, good play on the screen. But 
as he lowered the ball, popped out that time as he was about to pick up the first down. And that will turn it over and get the ball back to the Yeoman. Again, possessions, turnovers, uh, they can come back to bite you. Uh, That's yeah. two turnovers on fumbles and one turnover on down. So that's three that's three possessions that they've given Cameron. And Cameron going to come back out and try to capitalize. Here they go. First down and 10. This one will be a run right up the middle. That is stopped right away. No yardage gain that time. So this cadet defense is really starting to stiffen up, especially that front seven not allowing much in the run game. Second down and 11 now. After that one hit in the backfield, Drake going to drop back. Throws this one deep, and that one over the head of his intended receiver. Dangerous pass. We know the five-star Kobe Black is back there, so dangerous when you throw it back there to Kim. So it's going to bring up a third and 11 now, and the Yeomen are going to have to think about how they try to approach this. They've been uh, hitting the cadets with these intermediate passes over the middle uh, off the play action. We've seen a few. Drop right here, third down and 11. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to go here in the first half. This one is going to be a draw play to Evans right up the middle, and it does work as Evans still on his feet, and Evans will have enough for the first down after that draw play. Great play call from the Yeoman once again as they are able to pick up the first down on the draw play on third and long. So big play right there. Big play. For the Yeoman as they're trying to get into the end zone, see if they can take this lead before they get into the locker room. Just over two minutes left to go in the first half. This one's going to be another draw. Hand off to Evans, and Evans still up on his feet. Evans finally brought down now. And Evans with back-to-back -back good runs that will move the chains for the Yeoman once again. Real simple draw, real simple scheme. Yeah. Uh, he's just handing the ball off, and he's just running off tackle. So uh, it's got to be some adjustments by Connolly to get. Uh, he stopped short of the first down mark of the game, but Evans really starting to make his mark on this game here in this drive. Yeah, and, uh, and of course the clock is a consideration. Yeah. Uh, I believe Connolly got the ball first. Mm -hmm. uh, and so after the half, Cameron to have the ball after in the, at the beginning of the third quarter. So unless Connolly finds a way to stop them, it's going to come down to a number of possessions. And this one, he'll be hit after a minimal gain. Saw Petty get in on the action there. And like you said, if they can find a way to score here before this half is up, as we see them call their first time out. With a minute 13 left to go. And uh, the possessions are going to be big as we go down further into this game. Cadets could find a way to try to take the lead, or, or uh, the Yeoman could find a way to take the lead going into the half. They get the ball back one, uh, right as they come out of the half. Those turnovers could be costly for the cadets. They're in this first half, so three turnovers for the offense. Yet they still have the lead up by a point as the Yeoman are trying to punch this one into the end zone with just a minute 13 left to go. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, I know we had some YouTube issues. You can always go to SyntexSportsNetwork.com and be able to catch it. Uh, we are not, I guess, uh, limited on that platform. Uh, you can go there and catch all of the action. And uh, but uh, again, thank all of the viewers, all of you in uh, Conley Nation and those that are watching Cameron. Yo, those that are watching from Cameron. Yep, we know they got a big following out there in Cameron. Uh, we got a chance to go down to you guys stadium last year. Uh, always love getting a chance to to just to uh, see football games out there in that Cameron Stadium. Great atmosphere, a real football city. You've got they put a couple extra seconds back on to the clock. Looks like they're trying to work that out. 
And now they've got it to 117. Left third down and one. Ball is on the 19 yard line. Cameron Yo trying to get into the end zone. Drake gets this one and he'll keep it. Drake tries to get to outside, gets hit, and he'll be brought down. We'll see if that is enough for the first down. I believe it will be. Yes, first down. Picks up enough for the first that time on the QB keeper from Drake. First down and 10. Now the ball on the 16 yard line. Drake will drop back. Drake looks into the end zone. He's got some open space, thinks about running. He stays up. He'll throw this one, and he's got a guy wide open. Could not connect with his receiver that time. Ball was just a little bit too tall that time. Went through the hands of his intended receiver, but he had a guy wide open. He was wide open. I don't know if that ball was either. Was he the too tall or the receiver was too short? Yeah, one of the two. <laughs> one of the two. He's coming in at 5'9", so not very tall in stature on that one. Uh, Drake really does a great job of keeping the play alive and uh, they kind of get that scramble drill going after a few seconds and makes this team very, very dangerous. Second down to 10, 51 seconds left to go. This one is going to be another handoff to Evans. Evans will be hit right away. And on it, and that was Jalen Petty once again in on the action. I said earlier we'd be calling his name a lot tonight. Gets another tackle right there. It's going to bring up a third down. 44 seconds left. Timeout called by the Yeoman. I think they've got one timeout left, so yep. they may uh, try to run. I don't think it's third and, it's third and seven to go. I, I see this being a passing down. I'd be very surprised if they, if they, if they ran the ball uh, and take it down to fourth down if they don't get it. So I'm looking for one of those quick passes. He's been doing a lot of a lot yeah. of these quick hitters. Uh, this is a good play for Connolly defense. Try to get some pressure on the quarterback because they really hadn't had he hadn't had much pressure. Oh no, he's had a lot of time back there to throw. As you saw on that last one, shot to the end zone, had a lot of time back there to throw. So he is getting challenged a lot back there. Like you said, to we'll see if they can get some pressure on the ball, make him make a quick decision, and also have to be ready for the draw. They picked up one on third and eleven uh, earlier in this drive. That was a big play. So with the timeout left, and this could be four down territory since we just saw that kicker miss one inside the 20-yard line uh, earlier in the second quarter. Yeah, I, I see this being a pass, of course, you know. And it's going to be a drop back for Drake. Drake looks into the end zone, lets this one go, and hit down, and the flag is going to come out there as there was some contact before Looks like some contact before the play, uh, the ball was caught. And it's going to be a pass interference. I leave on Stubbs. I don't know if they've got a replay of that in the truck. Oh, it looks like that was on Amari and Barnes. Yeah, it's a replay. I was trying to get a. And, yeah, you see Barnes just came in a little bit early there, made contact right before the ball was uh, coming over there. And that, that was not in the end zone. Mm-mm. Referee still discussing okay. where they mark the ball down at. And so that will move the yeoman even closer. I see this being a run. Yeah, they've got a timeout left. Uh, 37 seconds when you're on the two-yard line. You probably get a few plays off. Before you have to use that timeout if you line up quickly you can probably get a couple off they're going to hand this one and it's going to be a fake as they got a chance to get a sack and could not bring him down he's still on his feet throws into the end zone and i mean directly off the hands of his intended receiver that time the cadets did a good job of creating some pressure but could not get drake down on the ground he Maybe shoots that one that into one the again. end zone had a wide open man and that was elijah goodrum and, I mean, hits directly off of his hands that time as Drake should have had a touchdown right there. It's going to be second down and goal to go. Cadet defense almost got back there and almost got a huge sack. Could not bring Drake down that time. It's going to be second. And Evans 
They're going to try to push him forward, but he's going to have no luck as he's going to be brought down once again short of the goal line to gain, short of the goal to gain. And this one is going to run down to about 14 seconds before the Yeomen finally decide to take a timeout. Oh, well, they don't take a timeout. And so this clock will keep going. One more play as this one's going to be a handoff to Evans. And he will not get there as he's been brought down. One second left, and they will call a timeout with just one second left to go. So they barely, barely get that timeout off as the Yeoman will have one second and one play here before this half is up. Uh, great job by the cadet defense in the circumstances to be able to come up with yeah, the stop. Yeah, that was a great play. We're doing this timeout. Let's see if we got a replay on that one, that last play. Uh, but they needed a they needed a defensive stop. The big time stop there. Stuff in the goal line. And we'll see what the Yeomen decide to come out here and do. They could kick this one in at about the same uh, distance of an extra point. Or take their chances and try to keep their offense on the field. I think they'll bring out the kick team. So they'll come back out. Fourth down and four. Just one second left to go here in this first half. Field goal kicker out. And this one is up. And it will go through the uprights this time. And that one, it will be good. And that is how we will go into our halftime break, folks, with the score 24 to 22 and what has been a very, very action-packed first half. A couple fumbles in that first half kind of slowed down the momentum that the cadets had. Gave the Yeoman the ball back with a chance to score. The cadet defense able to stiffen up. Only gives up a field goal after they start with good field position going into the locker room. Two-point lead for the Yeoman as they go into halftime. Yeah, some adjustments need to be made at half. Uh, we gave up the ball three times. Yeah. Two turnovers uh, with fumbles and one a turnover on downs. And so it, it's it's really hard to recover. It's it's uh, it's really good that they're only down by two points. Yeah, yeah. You know, because this could really be a different score. And so uh, I'm sure that Coach Garrick is going to make some adjustments at halftime and try to get these guys where they can uh, make a few more stops. They, 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 the defense toughened up and stiffened up uh, in this second quarter as opposed to the first, but the field position that they gave away was just so great. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't have to go very far to score. And so the defense is going to be uh, important right at the beginning of that third quarter. Yeah, kind of similar to what we saw last week as La Vega was getting the ball coming out of the locker room with the lead, and that uh, Conley defense really stiffened up and made a statement and got that uh, stop on that first drive. So we'll see what Coach Garrett uh, draws up with his guys as they talk it over at halftime. 24 to 22 is the score, folks. Cameron Yo up on number seven, Conley Cadets, by just two points going into the locker room. You'll see the Cameron Yo band who is taking the field here now and then the Conley Cadet band before we come back to wrap up our halftime. Uh, 24 to 22 is the score as we go into half. We'll be back. You're watching Syntex Sports Network. What's up, everybody? My name is Jalen Gillis. You may know me from Syntex Sports Network. We're starting a new platform 
Recruit 254. Our mission is to highlight the amazing student athletes of 254. So if you're in the Waco, Colleen, Temple, Mark, Marlin, or any surrounding 254 areas, follow this platform and join the movement. Recruit 254. 254, let's run it up.
The Yo Band is under the direction of John Shriver, Alyssa Brown, Sarah English, Austin Clark, and Lydia Muniz. The Yo Band is a six-time consecutive UIL State Marching Band finalist and has received 12 consecutive UIL Sweepstakes Awards. The Yeoman Band would like to thank the Cameron ISD administration, faculty, band boosters, and the community for all their support. Once again, the CHO High School Marching Band. Please direct your attention to the center of the field as we welcome the 2023-2024 Connolly High School Blue Angels. The Blue Angels are under the direction of Cassidy Munson. Captain for the Blue Angels is Rainique Guardiola. Co-captain, Crystal Ariaga. Social officer, Callie Raines. And Blue Angels of the Week this week, Harmony McCormick. And Juliana Luhan. Tonight, the Blue Angels will be performing a palm kick routine to Rain On Me. Show me a feel good day. Yeah, it's gonna be 
ladies and gentlemen, now introducing for your halftime enjoyment the Connolly High School Cadets Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Dr. Nora Mosey. Assistant directors are Clint Ladd and Raimundo de la Cruz. Color guard director is Kevin Mendoza. The band is led on the field by senior drum major Rainique Guardiola. Captains are Michael Rollins, Matthew White, Daniel Escobedo, Giovanni Boyer, Courtney Sims, Sarah Londi, Weston Williams, Alexavier Jackson, Natalie Oliari, Savannah Parker, Trinity Parker, Rodrigo Gonzalez, Alexander Woodley, and Callan Dennis. Color Guard Captain is Vanessa Chapa. Lieutenants are Laura Sitton and Naeem Soto. This week's section of the week is the Mellophone section. Band members of the week are Denise Ramirez and Jaden Alaskawaga. Color Guard member of the week is Naeem Soto. Tonight's show includes the first movement of the band's UIL competition show, Aurora, followed by the Connolly High School fight song. Drum Major, you may begin your performance.
My name is Debbie Kimbrell. I am the administrative assistant here at Anderson Chapel. I also work as part of the media ministry. It was great working with Lighthouse. They, everyone was very professional. Came in to do um, video recording and streaming for a conference that we hosted here um, on time. They did what they needed to do. It was seamless and transparent. It was great. The feedback, everyone was impressed. So it went out, um, it was a conference level, so a state level event. And everyone was impressed with uh, the product and the result. We got the DVDs too, which people purchased and they were impressed with those. Um, it was great overall. My name is Debbie Kimbrell. I am the administrative assistant here at Anderson Chapel. I also work as part of the media ministry. It was great working with Lighthouse. They, everyone was very professional. Came in to do um, video recording and streaming for a conference that we hosted here um, on time. They did what they needed to do. It was seamless and transparent. It was great. The feedback, everyone was impressed. So it went out. Um, it was a conference level, so a state level event. And everyone was impressed with uh, the product and the result. We got the DVDs too, which people purchased, and they were impressed with those. Um, it was great overall. My name is Debbie Kimbrell. I am the administrative assistant here at Anderson Chapel. I also work as part of the media ministry. It was great working with Lighthouse. They, everyone was very professional. Came in to do um, video recording and streaming for a conference that we hosted here um, on time. They did what they needed to do. It was seamless and transparent. It was great. The feedback, everyone was impressed. So it went out. Um, it was a conference level, so a state level event. And everyone was impressed with uh, the product and the result. We got the DVDs too, which people purchased, and they were impressed with those. Um, it was great overall. My name is Debbie Kimbrell. I am the administrative assistant here at Anderson Chapel. I also work as part of the media ministry. It was great working with Lighthouse. They, everyone was very professional. Came in to do um, video recording and streaming for a conference that we hosted here um, on time. They did what they needed to do. It was seamless and transparent. It was great. The feedback, everyone was impressed. So it went out. Um, it was a conference level, so a state level event. And everyone was impressed with uh, the product and the result. We got the DVDs too, which people purchased, and they were impressed with those. Um, it was great overall. take these pictures from you know, your freshman yeah, year and yeah, send it back yeah. to, to, uh, to Waco High. And you would walk through this hallway, you see the Curtis Jones, and you see yeah. Jay Johnson, you yep. see all, mm -hmm. uh, uh, DeGrade and all these guys Jay walking Johnson, back down. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you walking through, you like, man, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be up there one day. Kimbrell. I am the administrative assistant here at Anderson Chapel. I also work as part of the media ministry. It was great working with Lighthouse. They, everyone was very professional. Came in to do um, video recording and streaming for a conference that we hosted here um, on time. They did what they needed to do. It was seamless and transparent. It was great. The feedback, everyone was impressed, so it went out. Um, it was a conference level, so a state level event, and everyone was impressed with uh, the product and the result. We got the DVDs too, which people purchased, and they were impressed with those. Um, it was great overall.
Hello and welcome back into Centex Sports Network as we are getting ready to come out of the locker room. Conley Cadets right now at home taking on the Cameron Yeoman. Down by two points. Cameron is set to receive the ball as they come out of this locker room break. In that first half, Cameron was able to get the lead. Conley had some turnovers, some miscues uh, that they definitely want to get corrected. Had a couple fumbles and a turnover on downs. And that is what helped Cameron be able to get to this two-point lead. Now this ball will go out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Both offenses were really on fire in that first half. They kind of tailed off towards in uh, Cameron towards the end of that first half. The Conley defense was able to really stifle and uh, come in there and get a stop and hold them to only three points at the end. Very important there towards the end of that first half. So starting off here in the second half, Cameron will start with the ball. We'll see if this cadet defense can come back out and get a stop like they did last week coming out of the locker room. Yeah, Jay, and it's important, uh, as we said, going into halftime, it's important that uh, they make a few adjustments. Cameron is not uh, doing anything like far out. They're, they're, they're playing just basic sound football. Yeah. They're, they're, they're running the ball on first down, getting three yards, four yards, five yards, and getting themselves in a position on third to convert. And so uh, if Conley is going to make uh, uh, some adjustments, they got to put them in a third and long yeah. and, and, and get them off the field. Because I'm guaranteeing you, it's probably still right. Action is going to come into play. Yeah, you'll see that conditioning kicking in. We're in week three, so we'll see how much of conditioning that some of these guys have. They're going to re-kick after the penalty. Uh, so Conley's going to kick this off once again. It's time the kick will stay inbounds and get a good bounce that will go to the back of the end zone he's gonna have to return this one from the one yard line and he'll be brought down right away that time behind the five yard line a good job that time by the special team of the cadets on the re-kick able to come in and get a big play that's going to start this cameron yo offense inside their own five yard line big uh that all started with that kick that was yeah. an excellent kick yeah he kicked Great it kick. over the coverage it, uh, they looked at the ball, thought it might go out of bounds, but it didn't. It stuck there. And so the player uh, tried to pick it up and make uh, the best of it. And uh, Conley's coverage was able to get, catch up with him and put him on the ground. Yeah, not much he could do that time as he fielded it at, the, at about the one-yard line. Only picked up a couple yards. Like we said, great job by the special teams. Of ball start. And... Won't really back them up far at all. Probably just half the distance to the goal that time. Back them up a couple yards. Now Connolly's got to make sure it's it's in places like this where long runs could get could open up. Yeah, that's not what you want to do. Uh, we want to keep them in that hole. If you're Connolly, if uh, if you're Cameron. You want to make sure you get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Yeah. First down and 12. They're going to hand this one off to Evans. Evans right up the middle. He'll be brought down. And they're going to say on the one-yard line, very, very close to a safety that time. And this cadet defense is coming out ready so far here in the second half. Special teams back them up. Defense making plays so far. Second down now and 14. Ball on the one-yard line. Yeoman looking to the sideline. Not much you could really draw up here as they're backed up against their own one-yard line. Got to get out of the end zone if you hand this one off to Evans. This one is a fake pass play. Backs up, throws this one over the middle of the field, and that one is going to be batted down. Great coverage that time on the play as he was able to get back and recover. Who else? The five-star Kobe Black that time as they were looking for the run. Great recovery speed that time. Gets out, gets his hands on the ball, and shows... Why he is a five-star DB right there. Gets his hand in, breaks that play up. I feel like if he almost was able to get underneath that one. Yeah, it was close. I thought he was going to try to reach out there with their one hand. 
and try to see if he can scoop that one in. But nonetheless, great play made right there. It's going to make this a third down and long. Third and 14 backed up against the one-yard line. And Drake will drop back to throw this one. Drake will let this one go across the middle of the field. He's got a man and moving. And he. Some big play right there as Drake was able to stand in the pocket and deliver a shot down the field. Picks up the first down for his team. Yeah, and they went to uh, six. He caught a big pass in the first half. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these camera receivers, and they got a quarterback. Yeah. That was hard being able to pick that one up. They hand this one off to Evans. Evans going to be hit and drilled down that time as Sibley gets in on the defensive end this time as him and Kaufman able to get back there in the backfield once again. Gage Kaufman, one of those guys in the front seven that you get to see uh, a lot, making a lot of different plays there. And one of the great things about playing in 4A, you get to play both ways. Sibley gets to hand out some punishment. Yeah. As opposed to taking it all the time. Yeah, that's how he got his start on varsity, starting at that linebacker position a few years ago. A drop back for Drake. He's still dropping back, and he'll just throw this one into the ground that time. As looks like it, they were trying to set up a screen. Could that defense ready for it? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, that particular time they were they were trying to set the screen. So Connor's got to play under control in their pursuit. Uh, screens only work when you over pursue. Yeah, yeah. They say a uh, good job that time of staying controlled, making up a third down and eleven. I think you better find the guy in the slot. And I'm pretty sure that's where they're going. Third and eleven. Drop back for Drake. Drake looking. He lets this one go towards the sideline, and this one is going to be a jump ball and caught that time. And another good play on another third down. They somehow find a way to convert. This time it's Elijah Goodrum once again able to come up with the catch as that was just a jump ball. They threw that one up, and Drake doing a good job of giving his receivers a chance and, and placing a really good ball out there. Drake, I, I mean, we got to see him last year. He played a yeah. really good game. No, this, guy, this guy can ball. Yeah, he can play. He's, he's coming out here playing once again. First down to 10. This one is going to be a handoff to Evans. And Ev QB just yet. Is that going to bring up a second down? Yeah, they're going to have to. Uh, I don't know what they dial up here, but they got to dial up something to get some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, I'm convinced that you just can't let number one sit in the pocket. No, you cannot. You cannot let him get time back there in the pocket. He is going through his reads, and he is making the right decision so far. Second down and nine, ball on the 45-yard line. See if Connolly can't dial up something here. See some guys creeping to the line as they try to bring some pressure. They get a quick screen to the outside, and Nobles with a good tackle that time, able to bring him down. And that's going to bring up yet another third down. This is going to be the third one they faced on just this drive alone. Looks like Cadets did bring the pressure that time, and they drew up the right play for a blitz in the screen. Great job by Nobles that time to get off his receiver and come make the tackle. Yep, yep, running back. And, uh, you know, you put... Oh, yeah. Can't have yards after the catch. Especially playing in man, cover zero sometimes with the blitz. You give up a tackle, that could be a touchdown. Third down and seven, a drop back from Drake. He pump fakes, lets this one go towards the sideline, and that one is going to be broken up that time. Great play to get over there and break that one up. I believe that was Sibley coming in at the safety position, ran out there to break that one up, able to get his hands in on the ball. Great defense that time and a huge, huge third down play. I would definitely keep my eyes on these guys. Uh, Cameron may pull out anything. Yeah. You might want to just keep your defense on the field and put one man back. Yeah, we saw that a few times last night. If anybody to watch the, uh, the Chiefs versus the Lions, the Lions are like that, uh, one of those teams you cannot trust on fourth down. you got to keep your defense out there. And the Yeomen, one of those type of teams, they're going to punt this one off. And this punt is going to be fielded by Sibley, and Sibley will be brought down after a very minimal gain. 
Well, and that will bring the cadet offense back on the field. So, uh, Cameron was able to flip the field, and instead of they started on their one yard line, and yeah. so instead of the cadets having good field position, they're starting on their own 16 yard line. So that 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 was, uh, but we got the ball back. Yeah, yeah, they get the ball back and. Now, not exactly in the field position you might have thought when they were on the one-yard line, but they still get it back. Ball on the 17, first down and 10. This one is going to be a handoff to Sibley right away as he'll get the first handoff, and he's still on his feet, keeping those legs churning. He's going to fight for every single yard, and uh, that's what makes him such a special runner as you see him fighting for some extra yards right there on first down. Jalen, I see you guys did some, uh, some promo on Sibley. Yeah, uh, on Instagram, you got quite a few kind of little viral video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there from his last week's performance, and, and and I think some people saw it. Yeah, because some other awards popped up, and so that's something that we really want to do is to push uh, the athletes of Central Texas. Yeah, and get some eyeballs on them, and so uh, simply got some extra looks. This time it's going to be an option. Vincent will keep it. Vincent tries to cut across the field, and he'll be brought down after picking up some decent yardage that time. Gets enough to move those chains. Good run for the cadets. Yeah, Sibley, uh, like you said, caught some extra attention, caught some other eyes uh, the last week. We've been saying this for a couple of years now. One of the best backs in Texas uh, and got Dave Campbell's Texas Football Player of the Week last week for his efforts. This time it's going to be a handoff to Sibley. Sibley going to the outside. Sibley staying on his feet. Sibley got a block it downfield. Sibley still on his feet. Sibley still moving. And he'll be brought down out of bounds after another big run right there from number one. Keeper Sibley has a chance to take a yard just about every time he touches the ball. And a really big gain that time as he's able to get up the field. You can see that second level speed. I mean, when he's moving into that second level, he's running. He's catching up the guys that are running in front of him. Yeah, you know, guys uh, are 10 yards in front of him with blocks, and he's catching them. And so, uh, uh, and, I know, and I know uh, because we look at the analytics, we, we've got people watching us from uh, Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah. We've got people watching us from oh, yeah. Alabama, yeah. Uh, the state of Alabama. we got people College watching. College Station. College Station. A few of these, these places. we got yeah. people watching from uh, Ohio and Michigan. Oh, yeah. I'm just – <laughs> I'm not saying who's watching. I'm just looking at the analytics, and I know we probably don't have parents in, in uh, Alabama. So yeah. I'm just saying uh, this guy's quite a, a talent here, uh, a lot of talent on this Connolly Cadet offense. First down after the big run, they're going to hand this one off to Ethan Ells. Ells will pick up a few yards right there, another electric back out of the backfield. Ethan Ells, the junior, guy who made this coming out party in week one. And picks up another good run right there. It's going to bring up second down and five as they are on the five-yard line, second and goal. Going to line up three wide receiver set. They've got a man in motion. Vincent will keep this one. Vincent will go right up the middle once again. And Jamari and Vincent with another score for the cadets as they come back in the second half, get the stop they need, and now take the lead. Jamari and Vincent with his second touchdown of the game. Patient waiting on that hole to open. Patient runner, and we know he's got the speed. Didn't need it that time. Was able to walk right into the end zone. Touchdown, cadets. As they will bring, looks like a keep the offense out on the field see if they can go for two here after scoring and this one will be a keeper on the two-point conversion Sibley will walk this one into the end zone keeper Sibley caps off the touchdown from Jamari and Vincent makes this a six-point game as the cadets have taken the lead back 30 to 24 is the score as number 17 in 4A division two here at home taking on a tough opponent in the Cameron Yeoman They've got the lead as we're about halfway through this third quarter. You see Frank the Tank coming back out onto the field Frank after the another score. Look and at, look at those decals on the side of that helmet. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. That's like a special. Yeah, he picked up. He picked up some extra. Maybe picked up some extra decals after the couple yeah, of wins. I, <laughs> I was in the army and 
I've been to Fort Knox where yeah. we've got quite a few tanks. I've never seen a tank helmet quite like that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I know that Conley is, I know that Conley is in uh, Air Force ROTC school. I've never seen a tank in the Air Force either, but yeah. you know, we, you know, maybe they could put some, maybe they could put some wings on that thing yeah. and, and uh, yeah, we pick up a couple more wins here. We'll see if they can maybe get some customization going yeah, on that tank cover. there. Let's get some wings on the side of that tank if you're going to be Air Force. Six oh six left to go here in this third quarter as Conley has just come back out and taken the lead. They're getting ready to come back out, kick this one off. Last time their defense was able to get a stop. The one, one thing I'm seeing, Jalen, is a lot of these Cameron Yo players got their hands on their hips. You know, yeah. I look for things like that when, when I play football. You're looking for uh, anything to make you think that guy is – Conley's kicker yeah. is – I was just going to say two good kicks in a row. They try to reverse ball on the ground. They go in, try to pick this one up. Looks like the cadets have the football. And a great play, two back-to-back -back wow. great plays made by the cadet special teams – and Conley's kicker is on fire right now. Let's start with that. After he booted this one to the back, they tried to reverse. Looks like lost the ball that time and ran in to be able to get that one. Big play made that time by the cadets. Big play, big play. And uh, the uh, Cameron, that's their, uh, that's their star wide receiver that's down. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like we've got a man down for injury, and that is Jaquarius Hardman down so we want to pause for that and while the trainers go over there and take care of him I, I see them holding the hip so it's probably a hip pointer or, you know when you when these 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 helmets hit these 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 joints it hurts oh yeah it hurts and uh he's up on his feet and i'm sure he'll be back shortly and uh but but the the the, the big play is conley has the ball uh right here on the six-yard line, the five-and-a-half, six-yard line uh, with the opportunity to try to increase this lead. And uh, Cameron uh, trying to do a reverse there. You yeah, know, I'm you not know, sure about trying it inside yeah, the five-yard line. Inside the five, you know, I'm kind of puzzled on that one. <laughs> I don't know why they would try that anyway. They've been moving the ball. Yeah, yeah, you don't really need much, many trick plays. They've been moving the ball. Yeah. And so uh, – with Conley, the only thing Conley's really kind of taken away from him so far has been the run. So this one's going to be a direct handoff, direct snap to Keeper Sibley, who will get into the end zone once again. We, got we a see penalty. a flag come out late there. We'll see what this one be for holding or. And this could go against the cadets. Might back them up some. there on the replay if, if, now if they if they call that on I think they called it for a guy holding the face mask but that was you know this guy was getting slung also so I, I don't really know how to really kind of justify the call yep and that will go against the cadets and that's going to back them up so change up a little bit of what they were trying to do so it's going to be a first and goal from the 14. And uh, you never want to have a penalty that takes points off the board. That's, yeah. You never want those penalties because anything could happen. Now backed up, first and goal. Yeah, they can't get a first down, so Conley yeah. has to score. They got a score right here. Kind of switches the pressure on to Conley a little bit. First down to 14. Looks like the Yeoman going to stack the box. They're still going to hand this one to Sibley. Sibley oh, making some people miss. Sibley staying on his feet. Sibley, what a strong runner. And Keeper Sibley walks into the end zone this time. A great run once again from Keeper Sibley. Multiple broken tackles that time on that play. He, didn't have, any, he didn't have anything there. He gets to that first hole, gets to that second level, makes the first man miss. His, Sibley's got incredible, he's got incredible balance. Yeah, great balance, that's, great core strength. That's, that's what makes him uh, real special. This guy's got some some great balance, and he's got that second gear. Yeah, he, yeah he, he's got some wheels, too. He can move. Strong player. Like you said, really, really great balance, great core strength to be able to stay up, breaking off multiple tackles. 
And uh, he gets in the end zone once again, guys. And this guy pretty much lives in the end zone. 36-24 as the Cadets will try to get the two-point conversion. Sibley will get in this one. Pushed in with a few of his linemen as they cap off another good drive. That time a uh, drive provided by the special teams as the kicker and the special teams unit on the kickoff able to get them the ball back. Gets them in the end zone. Keep for Sibley dominating as usual. 38-24 lead as they swing this momentum fully into the hands of the cadets now. Yeah, so it's... Uh one of those things where, you know, they capitalize on the turnover. Uh, Cameron tried to do something here. You know, I don't know I don't know what they were thinking on that one. Yeah, not sure about that. Uh, but uh, the, the key is in a game like this, you want to capitalize on the turnovers just as Cameron did in the first half. Yeah, yeah. Cameron did the same thing. They capitalized off of those fumbles and off of those turnovers on downs. Here comes the cadets in the second half really making up for those mistakes in the first half. They've got a 14-point lead. And, uh, well, folks, we know how fast we've seen both of these teams score. So 14 points doesn't mean much, as we know. No, like no. we said last year, had, had about a 15 to 20-point lead, had a three-score lead last year, and Cameron was able to come all the way back and take the lead in that fourth quarter. No, 14 points is nothing uh, when you got a good quarterback and some receivers. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's nothing at, at the high school level. That's, oh, that's, yeah. that's nothing. Uh, but, but one thing that I've, I've learned also that – I uh, see these Cameron players. It's it's hot out of here, mm -hmm. and it's always the hottest oh, yeah. to the team that's losing. Yeah, <laughs> who is losing? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just extremely hot to them. Yeah, you can, and, you can uh, feel that extra pressure. As I said earlier, they got their hands on their hips, and so that tells me uh, it's starting to wear on them. I was expecting the opposite with that huge offensive line that they've got. Oh yeah, I mean they got some big boys. Like we said, six eight three forty. I mean that's a big old dude out there at left tackle. Six eight. See, that's what they've got him listed as on here. Oh that was uh, Kobe, Kobe Wilson, 6'8", 340 pounds. <laughs> that's a big old guy. Yeah, he's a big, he's a big kid, 6'8". You know. And this one is going to be kicked off. Another boom to about the seven-yard line. They do the reverse once again. This time he gets some extra yardage, and this time looks like the reverse is working as he's moving down the field. He gets past into Conley territory, and this time he gets in. To the end zone. The same play. Same play. Hey, they, they made a believer out of us this time. <laughs> As the Yeoman get into the end zone on an electric play that time on the kickoff. They execute the reverse on the kickoff this time. And that is Jaquarius Hardman who went down on the last kickoff. This time they execute it. And I guess they kind of showed us why they were doing that reverse inside the five-yard line because uh, you can get a touchdown off of it. Let me retract my statement Yeah, <laughs> why the coach was doing it. Obviously, they saw something. Yeah. They've seen something. They're running two times in a row. Yeah. yeah. They've seen something on the film. Uh, and and one, one of the things now, there was a player in place that just missed, missed the tackle. Yeah. Uh, it came to a one-on-one -on -one move, and six uh, was uh, much better at – evading that tackle than the other guy was at tackling. Yeah. But you got to you gotta stay in your lanes when you're uh, on the kickoff. And uh, I saw a lot of guys that were out of place. Yeah. And, may, and that could have been what the coaching staff had saw that made them start running those uh, Maybe reverses. we ought to kick to the other side. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe that should be maybe it. Maybe we ought to kick to the other side. Kick over kick there and see if that will kind of take some of the wind out the sails. That time is hard been able to get down the field pretty quickly that time. Yeah. And, uh, 14 points is nothing. <laughs> makes it a seven-point game just that quick. We couldn't even uh, get out of the five-minute mark there as we got five and a half left to go in this third. Back to a seven-point game, folks. And like we said, back and forth, these two teams. And it's always fireworks whenever these two teams seem to meet up with each other as the Yeomen get down the field on the kickoff return and make this back to a seven-point game. Now the cadets will come out, and they'll try to uh, get their, see if they can get their offense going once again. Hey, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I know we got quite a few watching, uh, not only from the Waco area, but watching from the Cameron uh, area. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. You're watching uh, Conley Cadet Football on Syntec Sports Network, and we, we just want to, uh, we always are thankful to the audiences that follow us. Uh, if you're watching on uh, the website, you had to you had to uh, to join. It's free. You just had to join with the uh, email address. If you're watching on YouTube, 
make sure, and I'm, I'm looking right now, we got quite a big audience. Hey, help us out by uh, subscribing. Help us out by subscribing if you're watching. Don't just watch, but uh, let's try to get our numbers up. We're trying to pull all eyes, as many eyes as we can, on the athletes here in Central Texas. And this one is going to be fair caught at about the 28-yard line this time. And like you said, I want to thank everybody that's been watching with us. If you're on YouTube, let's get that chat going on the YouTube, guys. Let us know who you're rooting for if you're watching with us on YouTube. If you are a Conley fan or, like he said, we've got a lot of people watching from the Cameron area. Welcome to Centex Sports Network. And uh, definitely get that chat started, guys. Make sure you guys are leaving some comments. Let us know where you guys are watching from, who you're rooting for. If you got a family member in this game, go ahead and give them a shout out there in those comments see if we can get that chat going. we got a little breeze going right now, Jalen. Yeah, uh, much needed. Much needed breeze, uh, a little wind to kind of cool this place off some. Just yeah. give us a little bit, just a little bit of room is all we need. Yeah, hopefully uh, there's supposed to be a slight, slight cold front coming in next weekend, so hopefully we'll get out of those triple digits for a little bit. As Conley will come out here on first and ten, Jamari and Vincent. Here comes the wheels right here. As you see him breaking away, here's the breakaway speed right here from the youngster. The sophomore able to take this one all the way. And the field is on fire right now as both of these teams can't stay out of the end zone. Jamari and Vincent, 72-yard touchdown down the field. And the young fella gets the hat trick as he gets his third touchdown of the game. Hey, I'll tell you what, Jalen, uh, that kid is a sophomore. Yeah. In another year, he's going to be a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's already started as this year has gone on. Just kind of start being a problem just a little bit. So a huge play there after the touchdown by Jamorian Vincent, 72-yard touchdown to cap off what's been a great night for him so far in this game. He's got three touchdowns, and we've kind of had to put some all hands on deck as the wind. We were just talking about that breeze. It's kind of turned into a little bit of a gust and uh, kind of moving some of our area down here. And 14-point uh, lead for the cadets.
So we are back here at the action as we had to take a small break there to uh, change some arrangements out here on the field. As you can hear, that wind starting to pick up here at Mac People Stadium. Third down and 10. The ball's on the 45 yard line. We had a workout there. That wind came oh, up. Yeah. And <laughs> wanted to blow over the broadcast tent. Yeah. <laughs> Had to switch it up, the arrangement, just a little bit, but we're still moving. Third down and 10. Drake will drop back. He's still looking. He's got time. Drake will take off up the middle now, and he's going to be brought down, and a flag is going to come out there at the end of the play. Now, they, they're going to call a horse collar there, but he didn't really grab his collar. Yeah. He grabbed his shoulder pad. Uh, can, <laughs> can, we, can we get a replay on that? Yeah, it looked like he kind of grabbed him by the shoulder that time. I think that was Perez, a really big, strong kid down there for the cadets, leader of that defensive line unit. I don't Maybe the truck didn't have that replay. I and don't know. It, and it looks like they're going to move him forward after that. So they will tack on that horse collar play. And that will move the yeoman a little bit closer. You just wonder. Second down and five now after that run. Jalen was trying to pull the replay and the replay guy wasn't in the truck. Yeah, yeah, he came out here trying to help us. He got worried about the tent. <laughs> he came out here trying to run and help us with that tent. Nothing like high school football on a Friday night. Oh yeah, plenty. It'll, it'll throw you plenty of curveball. Second down and five, ball on the 30 yard line. They're gonna hand this one off to Evans and Evans will be hit down just short of the line to gain is what it looks like there. It's gonna bring up a third and short. Looks like we're going to have a timeout call now. We've got 318. 318 left to go here in this third quarter. And uh, folks, like we said, this has been a very action-packed game. Both of these sides have been moving the ball up and down the field. Uh, Conley goes over 40 points for the third week in a row. This offense has shown to be a problem. Uh, in the beginning of the season. I, I'm going to just go out and say uh, Conley has the most explosive backfield. Uh, oh, yeah. I, 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 would, I would put that backfield up against any backfield in the state of Texas. And I know it's like, well, what are you saying? I'm saying they've got a sophomore kid that just ran the 74 yards. I'm saying that they got options to go to uh, Kobe Black, uh, <laughs> five-star and he's just not running the ball right now. They're not using him in that. They don't need to. Yeah. And you got arguably the best running back in the state of Texas. Now, I would challenge anybody to put up that kind of backfield. That's not to mention none of these. Uh, they got some guys that are in, in uh, backup roles that ain't chopped liver. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
that offense, that backfield is explosive. Oh yeah, a very explosive backfield, but like just that trio alone with Kobe Black and Black who can sometimes be the third option on offense, which is crazy to even say. When you're talking about a five-star player at the 4A level, as this one is going to be a quick throw to the outside, out route, he cuts back in, catches this one, and he's gonna try to pick up some extra yards as he does, and they have been killing Conley on those short out routes, and that was Casey Goolsby once again. Casey and Goolsby, it's, it's a, a strange thing. I, we, I just realized this, uh, Jalen. Goolsby used to go to our church. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That is Sister. Yeah. I don't know if she's watching. That is Sister Broaddus' grandson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, from uh, down there from that, he, he grew up in that Chilton area. Yeah. And he's out here making plays on this Friday night as this – Run will be stopped immediately by Perez and on the action. Not the guy you want to see when you run up the middle there. And like uh, talking about Perez, he's a, a really big kid, one of the better kids on this defense. Just looking at him standing next to number 75 out there is uh, pretty incredible to look at because some Perez big is humans, a big kid. Some big humans out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, for you recruiters that are that are watching, you know, you need to take a look at this Perez kid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Connolly now. They're going to drop back, throw this one on the out route, and this time it will be a score of 4-6 as they run just about the same play, hit them on the out route, same result. Case and Goolsby, we just talked about, able to get into the end zone, and the Yeoman up, on, up with a touchdown once again as they are starting to cut into this lead. Neither one of these offenses have really been stopped. Great out route that time, yeah, ran yeah. by Goolsby. Great execution once again from this quarterback, Braylon Drake, who I am very high on. I know he's uh, kind of smaller in stature, but, man, somebody, if it, I mean, not sure what his offers are looking like, but somebody could get a really, really good kid, uh, even if it's not at the D1 level. Wherever he goes, somebody can definitely get a guy that can sling the ball around. And we see some of these kids, Jalen, we get a chance to go across the state of Texas and watch some of these uh, different athletes. Uh, we were up in Dallas a couple of weeks ago watching that, cl uh, broadcasting that classic, mm -hmm. uh, Dallas Carter, and uh, we get a chance to go around the uh, state of Texas. And we see some of this great talent that you'll find in the central Texas area. Now, they don't have to listen to us. There was yeah. a kid a couple of years ago, we tried to tell them, uh, don't look at the measurables, but watch how he plays. That yeah. was Kavion Gaither. Oh, yeah. And, oh, by the way, he was the WAC Defensive Player of the Year last year. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, 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 you know, it's uh, football is not that complicated. Yeah. You know, you can look at the film, and I know now a lot of the recruiters look at the measurables yeah. before they check a guy out. But I encourage you, watch some of these guys. Oh, yeah. And watch uh, and watch what they do. Yeah, this, this, uh, these cadets have been putting out some amazing talent over the last few years and really want to put something together that can kind of highlight uh, really this golden era of kind of you could call the football uh, for prospects in the Conley area. I mean, they've been putting out consistently now over the last five or six years some really, really good D1 uh, talent. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's inarguable. And, hey, and uh, I saw uh, Randall Truett said the best running back in the state of Texas is in Duncanville. Well, <laughs> K. I, Durham. I, hey, yeah. hey, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with you there, but Sibley has got some really good tape, and the numbers don't lie. Is the what numbers I'll don't say. lie. The and, numbers and, do not lie. And the kid that we that uh, that we lost last year went to DeSoto. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he was the Trey star. Trey Wisner. Yeah, yep. he, him and him and Kiefer were the two stars. Yep. And Wisner only went to DeSoto when he left Conley and won a state championship. And oh, by the way, I saw him making plays on kickoff. Yeah. Uh, at the University of Texas last last Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you, you can't always get caught up in the six A and the four A. Yeah. You know, let the numbers. I think the the running back for Texas is he from three A. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jordan Brooks. Yeah. He came from Hattiesville. That's you know, two A so, ball, I believe. Yeah, two A. So you know, you gotta watch. You gotta watch these guys. Yeah. And uh, I'm not gonna necessarily argue with him either. Yeah, K. Durham is a dog. No, nope, no, nope. yeah, you're yeah. not gonna get an argument from me there. He's going to LSU for a reason, and they're gonna hand this one off to Sibley up the middle, and Sibley will pick up about six yards there on that run. I see that the, the chat is starting to heat up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. Let's keep it firing up. Uh, let's get that chat going, guys. And uh, 
Let's keep some of those, uh, spark some more of those debates, like he just said, the guy that dropped, talking about K. Durham there in the chat. Second down to five, ball on the 37-yard line. Important drive here for the cadets. Vincent's going to let this one go down the sideline, and it's going to be overthrown that time as he tried to find a man on the outside. Had some space. Looks like that was Nobles going down the sideline. Couldn't connect with them. Good job uh, using his hands and slowing Nobles down on that route. Yeah. And uh, he did a good, the defense did a good job on that route. It's going to bring up a third down and five now. Big third down for the cadets. We'll see what uh, Coach Garrick decides. Even if they don't get this third down, this could be four down territory here. Third and five, ball on the 37-yard line. They're bringing the jumbo package. They hand this one off to Sibley. Sibley tries to get up the middle, and Sibley will be stopped short of the line to gain that time. Looks like he'll get just to about the line to scrimmage that time. And like we said, it brings up an interesting fourth down here. We'll see what Coach Garrick decides. Will he put the punt team out on the field or see some personnel changing here? Or will he try to go for this? This is a big decision because, uh, like I said, the last uh, possession, Conley really didn't do much at trying to stop Cameron. Yeah. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and punt this one. And a very dangerous punt today. Almost got back there that time. And this one looks like it hits off the fingertips of the Cameron Yo player, but it will go out of bounds. So this wind is starting to pick up, and it's starting to make just a little bit of a difference here out on the field as well. as Helped him with that punt. Yeah, yeah, that, that ball, it helped him with the punt. And the receiver, uh, the returner, couldn't really get control of that one as the ball kind of flew in the air, got away from him. Almost blew down our tent, and it helped them with that punt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, the wind uh, is making I, the presence. But I am thankful. I'll, I'll take this. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll take this box fan wind that we got blowing out here on, oh, yeah. at McPeople Stadium. I will take it to bring this temperature down. Yeah, yeah, definitely very much needed. I mean, it was still almost triple digits at 8 o'clock here. So <laughs> definitely much needed wind there as it's 55 seconds left to go here in this third Cameron Yo will get the ball back on the eight-yard line. A great punt. Conley special teams have been playing great here in the second half. Ball on the eight-yard line. First down and ten. Four wide receivers set with the way this wind is. Backfield as they were able to bring him down. Zach Evans tried to get some extra yardage that time. Didn't pick up much. And now going into this win, the Yeoman might have to try to run this one. It's going to be almost kind of dangerous putting the ball in the air now. It's blowing in, but kind of across, diagonally across the field. Yeah. This one delayed handoff. To Evans once again. This time Evans trying to break to the outside and he'll pick up some decent yardage that time, but he'll be brought down out of bounds. And that is going to take us, folks, into the fourth quarter and what has been an action packed game so far here, folks. And it is 38 to 45 is the score heading into the locker room. Great game so far. Stick around for the fourth quarter. You are going to be into. Order to score 45 to 38. Number seven, Conley Cadets up on the Cameron Yeoman by a touchdown. We'll be back for the start of the fourth. My name is Emily Adams. I'm the marketing director for the Texas Asphalt Pavement Association. We are here at our third annual MAPS conference at the Waco Convention Center in beautiful Waco, Texas. I think the event has exceeded all of our expectations. We had an amazing turnout and great sessions and nothing but positive feedback. So this is our first conference in a convention center and I'm used to working with hotels where there's like one person to talk to for everything. And so at the last minute we realized we needed uh, 
audio and video services. And so I contacted Lighthouse Streaming and Audio and they were very quick to respond. They were able to, even though it was the last minute, they were able to fit us into their schedule and they provided us with technicians and equipment uh, to record our sessions and we'll be able to provide the people who are speaking. Back to the action here. It is third down and four as we start this fourth quarter. They're going to start this one off with a run. That will be stopped short of that first down marker. And now the yeoman coach stuck with the tough decision. And I believe it's too close to your own end zone. They're going to have to try to punt this one out. Yeah, he's got some wind on his side. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll have the wind. They flip field. Now the officials look like they're calling the timeout or a stoppage of play. It looks like they wanted to stop the clock and uh, kept going. Fourth down and three. And a chance really for the cadets to try to put this game away. I don't know about putting it away, Jalen. I think I think <laughs> I don't think two touchdowns is safe. Yeah, that, that that might be a little too close, especially think, for an yeah. explosive offense. Yeah, these guys have uh, shown the ability to score fast, and uh, punt this one off. Nobles back deep to return this one. It's going to bounce, and Nobles will pick this one up and run out of bounds at about the forty-yard line. So. Good starting field position for the cadets as they come back out. I'm sure there's going to be a drive where they try to take some time off the clock. Maybe take their time getting down there, like you said, trying to offset this explosive offense that they're playing against. As the ball was starting the 31-yard line. Here comes the cadet offense. First down and 10 ball on the 31-yard line. 11-24 left to go in this game. And this one is going to be another keeper from the quarterback to Vincent as Vincent tries to get to the outside and he'll be pushed out of bounds that time. Vincent shown to be dangerous in this game. He's got three touchdowns already. Over 100 yards rushing for Vincent and for Sibley. Second down to nine, ball on the 32 yard line as they come out and get lined up. Two wide receivers set and they're going to hand this off to Sibley. Sibley stays on his feet and he'll finally be brought down after picking up some decent yardage there on second down, it's going to make this a third and manageable now. I think they were lining this one up third and about four. Yeah, third and four is looking like they're where they're going to place the ball on the 37-yard line, third and four. We'll see what Coach Garrick and his staff decide to come up with here. Third and four, a ball on the... 37-yard line. Depending on what they do on this one, it'll probably be four-down territory. And Vincent tries to go up the middle, and he's going to be stuffed before he can even get back to the line to scrimmage. Big-time play made by the Yeoman defense as they were able to come up with a huge stop. And it looks like a penalty. And it won't be a penalty. Like they'll pick that one up. So it's going to be fourth down. So Connolly's going to have to punt into the wind here. Yeah. And I don't know. Uh, we died down just a little bit if they can get this punt off before this gust comes back up again. Receives the punt. Let's this one go. Pretty decent punt. Yeah, it was a good kick. And they'll stop this one from going back any further as they'll mark it down at about the 43-yard line where the Yeoman will get the ball and come out with the chance to tie this one up. 9.45 left to go. 
So we get, we're here in the fourth quarter. This is the money time. Oh, yeah. Shaylin, this is money time for both teams. Can't, uh, Conley wanting to put on their defense here and make some stops. And Cameron, of course, wanting to score. They're only being only seven points behind. Yeah. And, uh, and so this is no time to – this is no time to take your hand off the wheel, but this is the time where that training starts to pop up. All those, all that weight lifting you did during the summer, all of those kind of things, now it's time to put that on display. And so I uh, want to uh, give a shout-out to the former superintendent of Conley ISD, Wes Holt, checking us out. Here's the Drake drops back to pass. Drake's got plenty of time. He's going to run to the outside now. all day back there to throw uh, that offensive line doing a great job of pass blocking as Drake has had a lot of time in that backfield. And, and shout out to uh, Wes Holt, uh, former superintendent of Conley Independent School District. And, uh, and I did see someone post that they think that the last time that China Spring lost at home was the Connolly win, and that is accurate. Yeah, yeah. Last time China Spring lost, well, that was last time. They just lost to Melissa last week. Yeah, but yeah. Before, before that, they have not lost at home in two years since that overtime thriller win from uh, KV and Gaither. As he was able, I think that was 2021, as we were out there in China Spring. Instant classic game that's still up on YouTube. Second down and four now as the Yeomans starting to get some momentum and they're moving down the field. Yeah, pass for Drake. Quick pass outside. Makes some people miss. And now he'll be brought down by a swarm of defenders that time. They complete that pass and that's going to bring up a third down now. It's going to be third and short. I think they picked up about two. Yeah, third. On that one. Let's see what they dial up here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm thinking it's just going to be a handoff. Yeah, third down and two ball on the 39-yard line. And this one is going to be a handoff right to Evans up the middle, and he'll be hit, but he's short. <laughs> He's going to be just at the line again. We'll see where they mark this one, and they will give oh, him enough uh, for the first down that time. First. So a good run that time from Evans as he's able to pick up a, uh, an important first down that time. First down. To yard line. As we're under eight minutes to go in this game. Yeoman with a chance to tie it up. It's going to be a quick pass from Drake to the outside, and it's going to be incomplete that time. And they've been taking advantage of some of the soft coverage from the Conley DBs. What they're trying to do is set up a bigger play. Yeah, yep, that's what they've been trying to do. They tried to hit some guys down the field a few times to here tonight. Conley's got two safeties over the top. Second down, 10. Job back pass for Drake. Drake's got in trouble, and this time he will be brought down for the first sack of the game. Huge play that time made by that Conley defense, and they're able to get there and get into the backfield and come up with a huge sack, and that is... As we see a penalty flag fly out here, good play that time. Able to get some pressure in on the defense, or get some pressure on the quarterback in Zion Wright. We had some kind of activity after the on a dead ball here. Yeah, had a, something go on here after the play where a flag flew out you know, on third down. This could be huge on which way this one goes. It was going to be about third and ten. So we'll see. It's against Connolly. Unsportsmanlike conduct. So they'll get an unsportsman here they're gonna mark against them. Conley. And that could move the yeoman forward, and that could end up being big as it was about to be third down and long after the sack from Zion Wright. 
now it will be a first down to 10. So big, big switch right there, big swing of momentum. And just that play as it's going to be first down to 10 with the ball on the 25-yard line now. Yeah, big play right there as it's going to be first down and 10. And this one is going to be a handoff to Evans, and Evans will be brought down, but he picks up about five That's yards in the run. Looks like some more laundry out on the field. be a holding and this one will go against the yeoman so that'll back them up about 10 yards so that can change a little bit of the play calling this will be four down territory as they're already this far into cadet territory 708 left to go here we got a stoppage in the play uh, due to the penalty 708 to go here fourth quarter Conley is up by seven Cameron has the ball and driving, and I'm, I'm sure Cameron would love to put as much dent in this thing as they can. I don't, I don't know if, if they could get in, if they would go for two or not. Yeah, I, will be, I, I wouldn't oh, be surprised if they went for two. Fumble here, as he's going to have a chance to just find somebody down the field. He's got a man. Chance for an interception. Did he hold on to it? No, it's and incomplete. Incomplete, as he had a chance to make a big play down the field and not able to hold on to the potential pick and want to bring up second down at 20. Still a good job by Drake to get that pass off because that could have been disastrous as it's already second and 20. Yeah, the DB just lost. He lost, he lost the play. He lost the track of the receiver. Yeah. Almost a big play down there in the end zone, but now it'll be second and 20, ball on the 35-yard line. This one is going to be a drop back from Drake. Almost intercepted. And so that's going to bring up a big third down here. It was third and 20 after the Yeomans seemed to have a lot of momentum swinging their way. That holding penalty kind of got them back, got them out of their usual yeah. flow of plays. Got them behind the sticks. Yeah, and, and, and gets them behind the sticks. So now third and 20 with the ball in the 35-yard line. Big third down here. You don't have to try to get it all as they're probably in four down territory. But you definitely want to try to get a good chunk right here. Third and 20, ball in the 35-yard line. 6.48 left to go here in the game. Drop back for Drake. Drake looking. He's got time. He lets this one go on the sideline. He's got a man and tried to fit that one in between the, the corner and the safety. Could not get it there to his intended receiver. And now it is fourth down to 20. Too far for a field goal. Really too short for. for Yeoman will probably keep their offense out on the field. I don't know if I was Cameron, I'd consider punting here. Uh, you got all your timeouts. You stop calmly on the last drive. Yeah. I uh, know that that's, you know, maybe a long shot, but they're going for fourth and 20. Fourth and 20, they'll stay on the field. Ball on the 35-yard line. Big fourth down right here with 6.41 left to go in the game. And this one is going, looks like a bad snap. And that is going to be a turnover on downs. So... A bad snap right there kind of messes up that fourth down play. And that will be a turnover on downs that gives Maybe it back. Maybe we can see that when I, I missed that. That gives it back to the cadets. It's kind of a quick thing. Looks like they tried to catch him off guard with the snap. And looks like they almost got the replay, the quarterback had his head turned yeah. when the ball comes. So miscommunication as the ball hits him in the leg on fourth down. And sort of a letdown there. No, the the... the This is when Conley's uh, offensive line needs to take over this game. And they've got a chance to put this one away, and we'll see a stoppage in play. Just going ahead. We got a timeout on. Cameron is calling a timeout. And it looks like Cameron will call a timeout. It looks like that D line, the front seven was kind of scrambling there as they came back out on the field. Uh, Conley was already lined up and ready to go. 
So the cadets with the ball with 640 left to go in the game. Now with the chance to really put this game away, they got a chance to kind of run out some clock. And if they can get another score here, it will be very tough for the yeoman to be able to try to come back in this game. And this is a time where, you know, your offensive line takes over. And we, we've been we've been pumping up Keeper Sibley. Yeah. We've been, you know, uh, singing his praises. And so now is the time that they really need to lean on this guy. I, yeah. I don't, you know, I'd give him the ball all three times. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't be shocked I, I if, if we saw that. I think he's the most dangerous weapon on the field. Just give him the ball. 640, ball on the 41-yard line. They're going to come out in the three wide receiver set. That's looking towards the sideline to get confirmation on the play. Someone commented that regardless of the outcome, Cameron has a solid team, and I, I agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Agree. I know that they a, lost last week. To a, a, a ranked Yoakum team. Yoakum is uh, ranked yeah. uh, right now in the state, so they lost to a really good team. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I thought they had a really good team last year when we yeah. went up to Cameron. So. I mean, this this team can go as far as their quarterback can take them. This guy can really play in Braylon Drake. This one's going to be a handoff to Sibley, and he's going to bounce this one to the outside. He might be gone, folks. We'll see if he can beat the man out here, and he will. He's going to take this one all the way to the house, folks. And we said give the ball to number one, folks. Hey. That is the recipe. Give the ball to number one. Keeper Sibley delivers once again. Yet another touchdown. Dave Campbells, we want to see you post this guy again. We're calling every we're calling everybody out right now. Once again for his team, touchdown cadets. I don't know what Baylor's doing, but uh I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, I don't know what Baylor's doing, but with the amount of recruits, the talent that's at the Conley High School that's unsigned. Yeah. Man, I'd have an RV parked out. I'd have a Baylor <laughs> RV out here in the parking lot. Man, I don't, I don't really understand that, but folks, each and every week you are getting you are uh, getting to witness some really, really, really good play from the running back position. I know it's kind of he's kind of making this look routine at this point with uh, mo with going over two, three hundred yard games, multiple touchdown games. Folks, I'm telling you, it's not easy, and. Uh, I mean, I want to see this guy climb, climb, climb higher in the ranks. Somehow he's a three-star right now. Not sure how. I want to see this guy climb higher to that four and fifth, fourth and fifth star. And uh, man, he's putting on a lot of. He's putting been putting on a show so far this year for the cadets. By the same token, on the Cameron Yo side, I know the quarterback is a little bit undersized. But if I'm a a, a D1 Division two or a Division two yeah. school. I'm going to Cameron and getting a quarterback. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying earlier. If you can, some of these D2 schools, some of these JUCO guys, you might got a chance to get you a baller. What's his classification? Yeah, uh, this is senior year. This, this is senior, senior year. year. Yeah, we got to watch him last year. Uh, take over games. He, he's been playing great so far in this one. It's a quarterback in Cameron, so I don't know. Yeah, Braylon Drake can play. I don't know uh, what these recruiters are looking at. Hopefully he's got some offers. I don't know what he's got out there on the table, but. This guy can play. Watch the film. Yeah, he, yeah, the film does not lie. Film doesn't lie. As we see, Kiefer Sibley just got into the end zone once again. Brings the lead to 52 to 38. And ref's going to blow this one. Dead. Looks like they're trying to commute with, communicate with each other. And they will kick this one off. This one bounces up and will be returned at about the 35-yard line, and he'll be brought down at about the 42-yard line. So still a lot of time. Time left, 624 left. Uh, these schools, both of these schools, you know, can score quick. They score quick differently, Yeah. but they both have the ability to strike quick. So uh, Conley can't take their hands off the wheel here and try to coast in for a win. You got to learn how uh, to close games. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they need to close this one. And, uh, but, but Cameron's not laying down. They're out here to fight. Yeoman back with the ball on the 42 yard line. This one's going to be a fake. And Perez with some pressure. And let 
this one go down the middle of the field. Looks like that was incomplete, and Isaac Perez really got some great pressure coming in from the edge that time. I think he uh, was able to hit him on, yeah. that, on that delivery. And he wasn't I, really able to step into that pass. Yeah, I think he got his hand in either on his arm or maybe a, a fingertip on the ball there as he definitely affected the pass. That one went down uh, short of his intended receiver. It's going to be second down at 10. Another drop back from Drake. Drake will step up in the pocket, lets this one go across the middle of the field. That time couldn't connect with his receiver once again. And these Conley DBs making a statement here in this fourth quarter as they're starting to come out and make a difference. As the cadets have one of their players come off the field. Could have been him cramping up what it looks like. Third down and 10. Looks like Vincent will go in to replace him. Third down to 10. Field. He's still up on his feet, brought down, ball on the ground, ball comes out, and looks like they're ruling him down by contact. Great job that time by the front seven of the cadets to make some contact. Looks like they were ready that time for that draw play. And initial contact made by Isaac Perez, who is really starting to take over in this fourth quarter, made the initial contact. And Petty was able to bring him down after that big time play. It's fourth down and very long. As we'll see what the Yeomen decide to do, they might have to just punt this one off and see if their defense can come up with a stop. So they do punt this one into the air and back to receive. This one is Nobles who muffs it and they'll fair, it looks like he called for the fair catch before then. Fair caught the ball at about the 35-yard line, so... Conley's offense coming back out onto the field, up by two scores with 5.20 left to go in the game. And this is the spot where... ...for giving them the ball back. I think they tried to do that on the last one, but Sibley was able to get to the outside quickly, took that one all the way in for a score. That offense coming back out, and folks, this offense has been on fire the last few weeks as week one they put up 64 points last week put up 48 points right now they've got 52 points this cadet offense scorching hot to start the season this one is going to be a keeper for vincent vincent tries to get to the outside vincent makes somebody miss vincent stays on his feet vincent still moving down the sideline and vincent will be brought down out of bounds vincent showing off the speed once again right there from the sophomore who has had a great game in this one, over 100 yards. He's got the hat trick. He's got three touchdowns in this game as well. First down and 10 ball move to the 47-yard line. One is going to be a handoff to Sibley. Sibley gets back to that left side that he likes, and he'll be brought down this time after about a gain of five or six yards. He's going to bring up a second down now. Second down and six ball on the 43-yard line as they're letting some of this clock roll off. That's the key is Conley's trying to do some damage to the clock. The clock is the enemy of uh, Cameron now. And so 
We get this one second down, a handoff to Sibley. Sibley makes one defender miss, makes two defenders miss, bounces this outside, slides to stay inbounds. Great awareness that time by Sibley. Two great stiff arms. Yeah, yeah. Made two guys miss. But that's that's key. You don't want to do anything to stop the clock. If you're Connolly, if you're uh, Cameron, you want to get these guys off the field. Yeah. You want to get the offense off the field. Get your or get your offense a chance to get back on there. Uh, to get back on the field. Still, it's still just two scores. It's two scores. They give this one back to Sibley. Sibley, churning his feet and picks up some extra yardage there after the initial contact. Picks up about six yards on that run. Sibley starting to really run downhill, and uh, a lot of these guys are not going to want to tackle him the way that he's running the ball right now. Second down and seven now. That run ball on the 31-yard line. Clock still moving. This one is Cadets doing a good job of taking some time off the clock. Second and six. Ball on the 31-yard line. Sibley still in the backfield. This time it's going to be a run for Vincent. And And again, I believe. And it's going to bring up a third down and short. Here's a chance for the Yeoman. If they want to try to make a play here and try to get off the field. Third down and two with the ball on the 27-yard line. Conley wants to run the ball here. They want to continue to keep the ball on the ground. And they're going to let the time go down and call a timeout. Let it go all the way to one second as they do. And they'll get the timeout call with, on third down and two. 2.38 left to go in this game, folks. And it's been a good one. Conley looking like they're going to be able to pull this one out. Jalen, tomorrow is Saturday. Oh, Some yeah. college football is college coming around. College football is back in Dang. full for. Cowboy hat. Yeah. I yeah. had my Colorado <laughs> Buffaloes cowboy hat on. Uh, uh, it's going to be a another show there in Boulder. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow yeah, at 11 o'clock is uh, Matt Rule, former coach here at Baylor, uh, now the coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, are going into Colorado for their first home game. It's going to be quite a game to see. Yeah, it's going to be a really, a really good game to see there. Uh, Two programs that are on the rebuild. Two programs on the rebuild, probably in two different stages of the rebuild. As Matt Rule's first year in Nebraska, trying to bring that program back to what it used to be. And Coach Dion, the most talked about school, probably, uh, and after one week of football that I've ever seen. Keeper Sibley here on third down and two. He's going to have enough to pick up the first down and more. And Keeper Sibley just going to walk this one into the end zone, folks. And what else can you expect? Give the ball to number one. Going in there, blocking and opening up that hole for Keeper to just walk into the end zone. But it was there was some blocking going on. That's, oh yeah, that's, that's football. There's been a lot of blocking going on here that's tonight. Football. That's football. As Sibley, I know for a fact, will give a lot of credit to his linemen. And this one, as it's kicked through the uprights, but I saw a flag come out from the other side with 2:31 left to go. The cadets pretty much put this one away after Sibley has really just been too much, too much in the second half, folks. And like we said. I want to see uh, some some love again from Dave Campbell's, from Rivals, from some of these other guys. We'll be posting up some more of his film. And uh, Kiefer Sibley delivering week after week after week. And he's got a huge test next week that I know he'll deliver for once again in that China Spring game. Yeah, where you at, Dave? We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Uh, make sure you get these guys some love here in Central Texas. And yeah. I know and they got some great athletes and huge. <laughs> oh, Frank the Tank, come Frank look the tank at you. come looking for you. And so, uh, uh, but no, tomorrow's going to be some, some more college oh, yeah. football. Uh, I think Texas and Alabama is tomorrow. Texas and Alabama, the nightcap, uh, seven, 6 o'clock game. Baylor's going to be hosting Utah. 
here in Waco tomorrow. Utah top ranked team that's coming to the Big 12 next year. It's going to be rough on Baylor tomorrow. Yeah, I'm we, just we, we, we yeah. didn't speak on that one too much. Yeah, it's going to be rough. <laughs> I, I know I know we got Baylor fans that watch us. And oh, I know yeah. You guys, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, that's why I'm telling. Hey, t tell you. You know, tell your Baylor contacts they need to be camped out right over here. You oh know. yeah, they need uh, to come see about number one. Kobe hadn't made he hadn't uh, Black hadn't made a commitment yet. <laughs> yeah, and Keeper hadn't made a commitment yet. Mm -mm. So I'm I'm of the mindset we ain't at home. Yeah, get these home these local guys. You know, up in Colleen, get the guys from Colleen to come to Baylor. Yeah, yeah. RG three. Yeah, uh, uh, get the guys from Waco to come to Baylor. Ahmad. from 6A football and all, I mean, from, from six-man football. But, hey, uh, if you're going to win in the Big 12, you better have some athletes. That's the same play. Yep, here goes the reverse once again, and a big stiff arm right there to stay up on his feet, and he'll be brought down at about the 35-yard line that time. Same reverse play. And like you said, it's a big-time big, big time football coming tomorrow, big-time football. Not uh, The Baylor Bears, they're going to have it rough. Uh, I think they're going to give a scrappy fight, though, in that first half for sure. It's going to be hot. I know Utah is not used to playing in the type of heat they're going to feel tomorrow at 11 o'clock uh, in McLean Stadium. So uh, that's Yeah, that's going to be their biggest plus. Yeah, <laughs> they're playing down the quarterback. They're going to play with their backup quarterback. Yeah, they may, do, they may need to pray, Lord, send the heat wave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might be their best bet Let's uh, get some. tomorrow. Let's The 12 next year, so they're going to be looking to make a statement in this game. That's why, in that's why game. it's so important uh, to win at home when it comes to recruiting. College football is about recruiting. What Dion oh, has yeah. done, he's got some great coaching, he got some great a great staff, but Dion in that portal, he killed it. Oh, yeah. He's a he monster. killed it. He killed it in the portal. Yeah. And uh, uh, the scary part is this one is caught across the middle of the field that great, time. Great pass and catch. Yeah, good catch that time. Great pass It's like that was Goolsby once again. No, that was six. Oh, number six. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's back in on the action again. We've seen him a few yeah. times tonight, including that kickoff return. Yeah, but the, the scary thing about the the, uh, the buffs is Dion's going to be able to hit the portal again. Uh, that, then, <laughs> it's off season. They're not going to be able to stop him for what he's going to do in the portal. Big throw down the field. And this one is going to be incomplete. Had a couple receivers down there. Uh, so There's something to deal with there in Colorado uh, for these next few years. How long Dion is there. So Yeah, that portal's uh, going to be serious this coming up offseason. They're, they're not going to be able to stop Dion. They've already got the number one quarterback uh in the class of 2025 is going to be visiting tomorrow for the Nebraska game. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, man. Y'all hey, start letting them get some of these know, four and five stars. I know, uh, you know, we've been saying Alabama for yeah, all yeah. of these years. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just telling you, uh, when you start bringing in that kind of talent with that kind of coaching staff that he's been able to put together, uh, they can become dangerous. They're, they're, uh, their weakest point, which didn't look like the weakest point, is their front front five on offense yeah. and uh, front four on defense, but you know, I think they did pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely did pretty good against a really good uh, TCU team. As Here they are running down the field and that will be a pick and that should just about do it from who else? Jamarian Vincent able to come up with the interception as he was back there in the backfield. Looks like the cadets got a man down, a flag out on the field as well. Not sure if that came after the pick as Drake tried to catch the cadets sleeping. And big time play made at the safety position that time by Jamari and Vincent, who has played great in this game. And it's really a toss up for player of the game between him and Kiefer Sibley. Both of these two have completely completely dominated in this uh, game today. And and, uh, and I, Zach Childs uh, asked us to fix the sound. We've been having some issues with the sound today. This heat's been rough on our equipment. Oh, yeah. It's been rough on our equipment yeah, out here. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you're working with computers and IP stuff,
and we'll work to, to get it better on the next week. And uh, but this one, Jalen, tonight, is, uh, there used to be Dandy Don Meredith <laughs> back in the days before you were born. When he would look up at the scoreboard like this, he would sing the song, Turn Off the Lights. Yeah. <laughs> the party's over. And I think that's what, oh, yeah. I think that's what we got here tonight. Great matchup tonight. Uh, great game tonight. Uh, great game tonight uh, watching Cameron uh, come in here and uh, really play a good game. Now, the score, oh, yeah. you, you know, they're down uh, now by almost 30, but that really w is not where the game was. They played close this entire game. These guys played well. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know last year they lost to, uh, to Waco Conley, uh, yeah. but they went three or four rounds in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, Cameron, I think you're all right. I think you're okay. Uh, and as you said, Jalen. What the Yeoman can do at the 3A level as they hand this one off to Sibley and he'll just kind of go down. Yeah, and, yeah, they're the, just going to run out the clock here. And yeah, as they'll run out the clock here. Folks, once again, definitely, definitely want to thank everybody for watching tonight with us. A lot of people on from... The Cameron area watching with us. Definitely want to shout out to you guys. Thank you guys and wish you guys good luck on the rest of your season as you guys move forward. Like we said, you guys have got a squad here, definitely. So we're excited to see what they can do. Uh, next week, folks, next Friday is going to be a huge showdown. The number seven Conley Cadets will be going over to China Spring on the road to take on Crosstown Rival in the China Spring Coovers, ranked number three in the nation. They're beating up on Mahaya tonight, and they'll be ready for next week as well as they'll be coming in to try to trying to avenge that. So excited to see that game against China Spring and the Conley Cadets. That will be next Friday, folks. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And a uh, 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 great matchup here tonight. Great game tonight. Conley able to come out on top. Uh, the adjustments made on defense. Oh, yeah. I think uh, is one of the keys because uh, Cameron's moving the ball up and down the field. They still, they still had relatively good success yeah. moving the football, but Conley was able to stand up sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, stiffen up enough to make some stops. And that's what that's what Conley needed was some stops, and they were able to get those. Yeah, yeah, they came up with big-time stops when they needed them. Kiefer Sibley, absolutely dominant once again. I mean, uh, this guy just can't be stopped at this point. Uh, three games in the season, this Conley offense is on fire. 59 points tonight, put up 48 last week, 64 in the opener. Once again, for watching with us, tuning in live, like we said, next Friday, next Friday, huge matchup. Huge. And what will be probably the game of the week in the state of Texas when uh, Conley Cadets, number seven team in 4A, will be going to the number three team in 4A Division One, the China Spring Cougars, and taking them on. It's going to be a big time game, folks. China Spring's going to want some get back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to want the lick back for that. That, that loss at home a couple of years ago. They're yeah. going to they're gonna want some get back. And uh, we're looking for that to be a great matchup. China Spring Cougar Nation, uh, Conley, Conley Nation, the Cadet Nation is coming to China Spring. Oh, yeah. We're yeah, it's going to be an invasion next Friday, folks. So make sure you guys are getting ready for that one. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias, yeah. uh, uh, Instagram and Centex Sports TV, on Twitter, Centex Sports, on YouTube, Centex Sports Network. Go and like and subscribe to all those different pages on there. From Mac People Stadium, Jalen Gillis here with Roy Gillis. We will see you guys next time on Syntex Sports Network. Good night. I was on that front line. Look. <laughs> Look. I was on that front line. Man, Look. I was on that front line. How they finna tell us it ain't our time? Search what you can't find. I do it for them days that we couldn't shine. I was on that front line. How they finna tell us it ain't our time?